Mr. Palmer, after the failure of European member states to reach a compromise on uh, opening accession talks with North Macedonia, is the Presper Agreement at risk? Two points here legally, because uh, it is linked with opening EU chapters, and politically, uh, because the government lost a strong argument why it has signed the Presper Agreement at the, at the first place. And on the other hand, we have the opposition, which was and still is against the Presper Agreement, and opposition now got its grounds. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that question. I, I think it's an important question. And, and I would begin by underscoring what it is that the European Council did and did not do uh, last week. They, they did not say no to North Macedonia. They, they didn't deny the opening of accession negotiations. They were simply unable to reach consensus. And what they did is they indicated that they needed to, to look at this matter further in the context of a broader discussion on the enlargement process with an eye towards reaching an agreement this spring. Uh, as early as, as May. So w what we intend to do is to work with our European partners to encourage a positive decision on the part of the European Council for the opening of accession negotiations with North Macedonia, with Albania, as early as possible. Uh, hopefully as, as early as March is, is achievable. Um, but I don't want to start talking about whether this represents a threat to the, the PRESPA agreement. I, I, I want to keep focused, we want to stay focused on uh, North Macedonia's European perspective and the opening of accession negotiations as early as possible. When we speak about the PRESPA agreement, the opposition, current opposition, says that if it has the third majority in the parliament, that it would revise this agreement over the name issue with Greece. Mm -hmm. What is your stance? Well, we, we strongly support the PRESPA agreement. We think that, that full implementation of this agreement will contribute to regional peace and security and stability. It will support the prosperity of North Macedonia, of Greece, of the wider region. We'd like to see that move forward. Um, there is a, a political campaign underway. We understand that. Politicians are, are, are going to make the, the best case they can to the, to the publics. Strategically, uh, we think all involved will understand the value of uh, maintaining a strong partnership between North Macedonia and Greece. Uh, and we will work with our partners in Skopje, no matter who emerges from the electoral process, uh, in support of U.S. goals and objectives and in support of North Macedonia's European future. Does it mean that it's impossible to do something with the Presper Agreement and its essence after North Macedonia becomes NATO member, let's say? I, you know, again, I, I don't want to talk about hypotheticals, but I, I, I will underscore strong U.S. support for the agreement. Um, and, and strong U.S. support for the partnership with North Macedonia, which is in short order to become an alliance relationship. This is the, the highest order of relationships that the United States maintains. Uh, the PRESPA agreement has is, is been fundamental to North Macedonia's European perspective and Euro-Atlantic integration, uh, and we strongly support its full implementation. Are U.S. interests in North Macedonia and in the region uh, at stake because of the no decision of European Union to start negotiations both with Skopje and Tirana? Uh, again, I, I don't want to make too much out of that decision. It was, first of all, it was deeply disappointing. Um, we think it was unfair. Uh, we think it does not reflect the nature of the political and the strategic realities in the Western Balkans. Uh, the Commission has recommended the opening of accession negotiations with North Macedonia every year for, for nearly a decade. This country has earned that right to begin the process, and it's, it's unfortunate, it's deeply unfortunate that the European Council was unable to reach a consensus on that issue. And in fact, you've heard the same thing from multiple European voices. I think it is, it is a failure of responsibility on the part of the European Council that they did not reach that consensus. But again, it wasn't a no. No new conditions have been established. It reflects the realities of the inability of the Council to reach a consensus yet. But that does not mean that they will not continue to work towards achieving agreement on this consensus in the very near future. And the United States will press for that. The United States will push for it. The United States will advocate on behalf of both North Macedonia and Albania in that process. Are you, I mean, U.S. administration in contact with French President Emmanuel Macron and concerning his stance over the future EU enlargement? We've certainly made clear to our, our French partners at, at very senior levels that we're deeply disappointed with the position that Paris staked out in the European Council meeting. And we have encouraged France 
to work with their uh, European Union partners in pursuit of a consensus, including whatever discussions may be necessary about the enlargement process itself in order to reach an agreement that allows for North Macedonia to operationalize its European perspective, to begin the process of negotiating towards membership, a process that everybody involves, uh, involved understands will take many years. Uh, there are many voices, even in the European Union, high-level uh, officials, that are warning that this kind of outcome on the European Council in Brussels leaves, let's say, the door open for stronger influence of some global players in the region. Mm -hmm. we're, we're certainly aware of that risk. Uh, ensuring a clear European perspective for North Macedonia has, has always been important in shoring up the resilience of North Macedonia and the institutions of North Macedonia to malign negative external influence, including in particular from the Russian Federation. Uh, I believe the, the, the Russian Federation remains opposed to North Macedonia's Western path, Western orientation, European perspective. They certainly worked very hard to undermine the prospects of this country becoming the 30th member of NATO, and they failed. Um, I think the Russians will work against North Macedonia's EU aspirations as well. They don't wish to see this country as part of the Western camp, as part of the European family of nations. The United States strongly supports North Macedonia's Western orientation, European perspective, membership in NATO. And it's important here to underscore that the NATO process is moving forward. Just uh, a few days ago, the, the U.S. Senate approved the instrument of ratification for uh, North Macedonia's NATO accession. Uh, that's a significant step forward. There are still a few NATO members that need to complete and conclude their own procedures. Uh, the most difficult one, of course, will be Spain, which needs to get a government in place and the necessary parliamentary committee. It will take a few months, but it will be done. And I am hopeful that within the next couple of months, we'll be able to raise the flag of North Macedonia over NATO headquarters in Brussels. That'll be a great day, and I'm certainly going to be there for that. Uh, follow up, uh, we've seen a joint Serbian-Russian military, military exercise, I think it was called Slavic Shield 2019, where mm -hmm. Russian systems S-400 were for the first time deployed on a military exercise out of the territory of Russian Federation. Mm -hmm. Is this a threat for U.S. interests? <sighs> We have a strong military-to-military -military partnership with Serbia. In fact, uh, I, I think inarguably uh, Serbia's best military partner is the United States. We train together. We, we work closely together. We have uh, a strong partnership between the uh, Serbian military and the Ohio National Guard, part of the state partnership program that has been such a vibrant and important part of our engagement across the the Western Balkans region. Um, this does not mean that, that Serbia cannot also have a, a relationship with Russia, including a, a, a military partnership, but we value the partnership we have with the Serbian military. We think it's, it's more significant than anything that the Russians do with, with Belgrade. We do, of course, have concerns about not just the deployment of uh, Russian military equipment on the territory of Serbia, but the possibility of Serbia acquiring significant Russian military systems, uh, which would run the risk of, of triggering a review under the Katsa sanctions regime, uh, particular to the acquisition of Russian military equipment. And we hope our Serbian partners will be careful and cautious about any such transactions. What are your expectations from the dialogue between Belgrade and Pristina in these circumstances? Because having in mind what happened in the European Union concerning Macedonia and Albania, what are going to be the incentives for, for Serbia and Kosovo to continue with their dialogue? Well, certainly the decision, or the, the failure of the European Union to reach a decision with respect to North Macedonia and Albania sends a negative message to the region. Um, we're, we're hopeful, again, that we can get the European Council to uh, reconsider that, make a positive decision, send the appropriate message to the countries of the Western Balkans, which is that there is a path forward to Europe that is, that is open and clearly signposted. Uh, that's an important message to both Belgrade and Pristina as they consider the compromises that will be necessary in order to achieve an agreement on normalizing the relationship. Uh, right now, in the context of the, the dialogue process, 
our ambassador to Germany, Richard Grinnell, is, is engaged with both Belgrade and Pristina, pursuing agreements in the areas of uh, business and commercial ties that will hopefully incentivize the two sides to work towards a, a political agreement. Um, that is uh, a, a positive development, something that, that we're working in support of. I'll be traveling uh, this afternoon to Pristina for, for meetings with political leaders and then on to Belgrade for meetings there. And in both capitals, I will be encouraging the two sides to work to get back to the dialogue table, identify the compromises necessary, reach an agreement, and open up the path to a European future for both countries. You said that NATO membership is happening in the future months. Uh, do you see any issues in the military reforms in the Army of, of North Macedonia? And let's say, what is the U.S. position on some issues like the composition of the Joint Chief of Staffs right. in, the, in, the, in the Army? We value the partnership that we have in the military-to-military -military channels with uh, North Macedonia. North Macedonia has demonstrated its, its commitment and readiness and willingness to be a strong ally its willingness and readiness to deploy alongside us, its willingness and readiness to develop and build the, the military structures that are necessary to participate as full partners and allies uh, in NATO and to be uh, strong, capable partners. There will, of course, be reforms that are, are necessary, in, including at the general officer level. It's really up to North Macedonia to pursue those, those reforms, but with an eye towards fulfilling its responsibilities as a NATO member, as a, as a partner in the alliance. Uh, during his last day in Skopje, Assistant Secretary Philip Ricker, in the context of the dialogue between the government and the opposition on the law of the uh, public prosecutor, uh, stated that, uh, I'm going to quote, that political games should come to an end, and he was referring to the behavior of the, of the opposition. Uh, this issue is still pending. Mm -hmm. Have you opened this, this, this issue about the, special, about the prosecutor's uh, uh, law? with the leader of the opposition, Mitskovsky, while you were here in Skopje. I met last night with Mr. Mitskovsky. Um, we talked about this issue at length. I made clear the importance that the United States attaches to this issue, to, to getting in place not just a, a, a PPO law, but a good law, one that advances the goals of rule of law, transparency, accountability, and good governance, one that sends the right signals to the European Union, uh, one that sends the right signals to the, the public of North Macedonia uh, that, that those who abuse position, those who abuse uh, positions of influence and authority will be held to account. Uh, and it's very important that there be participation in this, not just of the governing parties, but of the opposition parties. That's true not just because of the mathematics. It's, not, it's true not just because you need a certain number of votes. It's true because this should be a process to which all leaders, uh, both in government and outside of government, are committed to for the betterment of the country. Uh, North Macedonia is approaching snap elections this spring. Mm -hmm. Are the political stability, the pace of the reforms, and the strategic orientation of the country at risk having in mind that pre-election period is a, a bit turbulent period? I mean, that's normal, right? Uh, democratic elections are, are fundamental to democracy, and elections offer the public the opportunity for change. That is, is fundamental to democratic practice. Our partnership is not with any one particular party or any one particular political leader. Our partnership is with North Macedonia. It's with this country. It's with the public of this country. It's with the people of North Macedonia, and, and that is is firm and unchanging. Governments change. This is a normal thing. Parties that are, are in power fall out of power. Parties that are out of power come to power. I, I have no idea what's going to happen in the elections in April, and that's a good thing, right? That there, there should not be certainty in democratic politics. There should be opportunity. But I am confident that whatever party emerges from the elections in April with the opportunity to, to lead this country will be a good and a strong partner for the United States, and we will value that partnership. Having in mind what happened in the last couple of years in the country, do you, th do you think that the country is now on the right path, on the right track towards integration in the European family and NATO family? Do you Absolutely. think that everything is set up? I, I think that what you've seen on the NATO track in particular is extraordinary. If you go back 
as little as two years and, and to say two years from now, North Macedonia, the country that will be North Macedonia is, is going to be right on the edge of membership in the NATO alliance. That would be considered an, an enormous step forward, an enormous victory for this country. And we are right there. This is a significant development. The decision by the United States Senate to approve the ratification of the protocol is a, is a huge step forward. The decision by so many NATO members to, to approve the instruments of ratification, there's only a few that are left. This takes time. But this country will be the 30th member of the NATO alliance, and it will happen, I believe, quite quickly. That is a remarkable step forward. This country has a European perspective. We need the European Council to recognize that through an affirmative decision. That means getting the French on board. And it was really only the French who were in a position to say not yet to, to North Macedonia's application. Not no, but, but not yet. We have some work to do. And that work is not really about North Macedonia. North Macedonia has met the conditions. They have, they've qualified. This is about the European Union getting its own act together. I believe they'll do so. They'll work on this. They'll find a path forward. This country has a European future. It has the strong support of the United States in securing and achieving that future. And in partnership and together, we will march down that road. Mr. Paula, thank you very much. Thank you very much for your time. Grateful for the opportunity.